Number 75, use principles of atomic structure to answer each of the following. And then we have letter D. So it says the first ionization energy of magnesium is 738 kilojoules per mole. And that of aluminum is 578 kilojoules per mole. Account for this difference. Okay. So for this one, I think the best plan of attack is to go back to our atomic structure, our electronic structure, right, our, our electron structure, and write out the, the uh, electron configuration for magnesium and for aluminum. So this one will kind of be like a little bit of a review. So we got magnesium on the left side and aluminum on the right side. Now, it doesn't really matter if you do your, um, your long form uh, electron configuration or the short form, doesn't really matter because the only thing that matters here is just getting down your, uh, your valence electrons. So for both magnesium, if we look on the periodic table, for both magnesium and aluminum, the noble gas that is preceding both is neon. So I'm gonna do the shorthand. Um, and, and by the way, if you are having trouble writing the um, electron configuration, you could always check out the channel. We have tons of videos just designated to drawing the electronic structure or the electron configuration in which I go step by step um, through a periodic table to kind of guide you how to do those. But since we went over those already, this will kind of be like a little review. So you can pause the video if you want and try to see if your electron configuration matches mine. So they both have neon um, as their noble gas. And then I'm just going to pick it up from there. So magnesium is going to now start at 2s and 2s2. Aluminum will be one uh, box over. So it has one more electron. So it has 2s2 and 2p1. OK, so that's what we're dealing with here. Now let's just write out. Uh, the ionization energies, and I'm just going to say that the ionization energy is IE. So the IE, the ionization energy for magnesium, they said was 738 kilojoules per mole. Oop, kilojoules per mole. And the ionization energy for aluminum is what, 576? You got it account for this difference. So basically they're asking why is aluminum less and magnesium more? Well, it all comes back to, oh my gosh, I, sorry. You probably knew it was coming. Okay. Everything's got to be nice in the middle. All right. So this all stems from what it means to have a first ionization energy. Now ionization energy, i.e., is always the amount of energy it you know it takes for that element to become a ta-da an ion. But now is a very specific ion. Is it the cathode? Or I won't say cathode, but is it the cation? Is it the positively charged ion? Or is it the anion, which is the negative? It's the cation. Whoop whoop. So the ionization energy is always the energy needed to lose an electron, to become positive. So the energy required or needed to lose an electron. That's fun. So that's the first thing. So we're always going to be, you know, breaking it down and losing electrons, not gaining. Gaining electrons is kind of like electronegativity and electron affinity combined. All right, so that's the gaining side. But ionization energy is always talking about losing. And if you're losing an electron, just like we said, it is the positive charge. Now, the first ionization energy means that literally you are losing your first electron. So there's a first ionization energy, there's a second ionization energy, there's a third ionization energy. The first ionization energy is always the energy of losing the, your first electron. So uh, losing first electron from the outermost shell, right? From your valence electrons. Okay. Now, one last thing that we have to put it together. When we're talking about high energy, 
and then we can compare it to what it means with low energy. If it requires a lot of energy, right? If you think about, you know, studying studying for chemistry, right? For me, growing up, it, it you know, it was a struggle. So that's why the, the best thing that I've ever done was for my classes, especially my science classes, especially if they were math-based, was to do every problem. Literally, I would, I remember, you know, being in college and Saturday, Sunday came around, you know, I, um, I didn't have any work. I worked during the week, but on Saturday and Sunday, I didn't work. So I, I literally got up at 7 a.m. and just kept studying until like 9 p.m. So do just doing all the problems. So that's my, that's, you know, my main advice to you is that's why we're doing these problems for you guys. Because, well, one, I, I love to do these problems, but two, I really want to help you guys with, you know, your, your classes. And we also have physics and math videos on the channel if you guys are taking those classes. But anyway, I digress. But for high amounts of energy, sitting and listening to me, it takes a lot, right? It takes a lot of energy to learn chemistry. It takes a lot of energy to get all this information in your head, right? So when something requires a lot of energy, right? It's really, really, really hard to do, but it's worth it, right? It's not impossible. It's just really, really hard to do. So high energy means hard to do. Um, and as, as far as a, you know, a element standpoint, they're going to be resistant, right? If something takes a lot of energy to be done, as far as losing an electron, chances are that atom is like, eh, I don't really want to lose that electron, right? So the lower the energy that it takes, that element, if it's losing an electron, is like, oh yeah, I'm losing it. I want to lose that electron. Go and take it, right? It's super easy. And there's got to be a reason why some elements have high energy, ionization energy for the first one, some reason why there's lower energy. So let's see. So as far as magnesium and aluminum, it seems like it's harder for magnesium to lose that first electron versus aluminum. So let's see. Coming into magnesium, right, M magnesium has 2s2. And if I just drew what this means in a, you know, in those boxes, it would be one arrow up and one arrow down. This is the 2s. But as far as aluminum goes, it would be the one box for the 2s, one arrow up, one arrow down. And then for the p's, you have three boxes. And these, this is all the 2p, right? I think so. Magnesium. Oh my goodness. I just realized that this is the 3s. But it doesn't really matter. Um, what, you know, what 2S or 3S, we're just going to change these. Have you been screaming at me for the past, uh, for the past 10 minutes? I heard you. I finally heard you. So we're changing it. So three, three's all around. Okay. And then I'm going to put that one electron here. Okay. So as far as losing the first electron, well... Before it lost, magnesium is chilling, right? It's got a uh, filled orbital, right? This is completely filled. Why would you want to break up something that's filled? If you can fill something, the actual stability is increased. So in this case, magnesium is like, why are you taking this electron from me? I'm already filled. I'm already good. Aluminum, on the other hand, it has this filled... 3s, but it's got this one extra one. And if aluminum loses this one, well, it's still got that filled one. So in terms of atomic structure, since aluminum has the extra 3p1, you can lose that electron. That would be super easy. If you lose the 3p1, aluminum will be a little bit more stable because then you have just the 3s that's being filled. So this goes bye-bye. 
and now you just have stability. But magnesium, on the other hand, is already filled. It does not want to lose the filled shell, right? It doesn't want to lose that one electron. And that's why it's super hard to do. It has more energy. On the other hand, aluminum is less energy because it has that extra one electron that you can just get rid of, and then you're filled. And I hope this makes sense. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for viewing the video, and I hope you're having a great day out there. Remember, keep studying, all right? Try to do as many problems as you can because that's how you truly get great at these subjects, all right? Um, so whether it's chemistry, physics, orgo, um, any type of mathematical um, uh, subject where it's just basically problems, problems, problems. The more problems that you do, I promise the more conceptual ideas that you will get down, the more math you'll get down, and you'll do better on those tests and quizzes, all right? I believe in you guys, and I will talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye.